it's out and, you know, lots of damage to be played. Well, the finals are underway. We're off to an absolute flyer. These players desperate to get their day, uh, oh, wow. day done here. Uh, we see Natalie opening up with the Tapu Lele and uh, throwing down a Fighting Energy and a Fighting Fury Belt. Uh, just tucking them behind the Tapu Lele for clarity. As Ian opens up for the Lone Mew, uh, but does get to play a Tapu Lele on his opening turn. Simply we're going to see a Bridget here, you know, the typical play that we see to write in opening hands. Um, but we had seen different stuff in the past, you know, depending on opponent's hands and stuff. But probably has a draw support in his hand, and we're going to see uh, an actual setup here on the other side of the board opposite of Natalie. Yeah, the tale of uh, two supporter hands, you know, one being able to, to play out the Bridget, get your deck nice and full, and on Natalie's side, you know, she had to pass just attaching to the Tapu Lele. Uh, you know, unfortunately, kind of on the, the negative end of the variance there, uh, an underwhelming start, but uh, Natalie has proved she's a fighter, and if there's any time that she can fight back from in a situation, it's this one. This match is going to be very interesting in itself because, you know, obviously there's Gabador, which slows down a lot on Ian's sign, but Ian also plays three Fighting Fury Bells to combat with that, so it's going to be a weird trade-off, no pun intended, but <laughs> with both matchups here, with both decks here. Yeah, I think if Natalie gets that, that Garbodor in, I mean, it's a, a little bit harder, especially with a slow start. You want it as early as possible. But if she gets it, then, hey, there's no trade. You know, she's not going to have to deal with things like the Mew as well, which has been a bit of a, a thorn in the side of this buzz wall. If that shut off, that has no versatile, she's going to be able to just explode on a turn like we saw her do in top four. If there's, if it's anything that uh, this Zorak deck has showed us in the hands of Jerry Rudiger is it doesn't necessarily need its trades to win two games. It's very, very true. He was able to, uh, you know, just attack with Lele and just kind of power through, you know, you know, great draws and just work through the game right there as Natalie has a Guzma to take out one of those Zeruas. Mm -hmm. The explosive presence of the Buzzwall only needs a single energy to knock out a Zerua because of the weakness and spread a little bit of love around onto the bench as well, 30 damage heading there onto the Mew in the back. So, going to help out a lot later on. I mean, 120 is a very awkward number. It's not too bulky, really. No, it's the, kind of the glass cannon of the deck. You know, it really tries to leverage uh, its low energy requirement to take the big knockouts on the buzz wall. Counterpoint to that is, uh, it's, it's kind of a sneeze in the wind. Pretty, pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty fleeting. So. It's kind of like a high risk and a high reward kind of thing where, you know, you can take out, a, you know, put his whole deck you know, between buzzwalls and fighting types, but at the risk of that, you know, very fragile 120 HP that can get retaliated very easily. Yeah, there's been a bit of discussion on which psychic type uh, kind of retaliation Pokemon you want between Mew and Mewtwo. And funnily enough, the Mewtwo from Evolutions actually has more HP yes. than this EX from, I mean, originally printed in Dragon's Exalted, so a sign of the times, really. Exactly right. I believe we see a Malo here, uh, Ian pulling two cards, and uh, that leads me to believe he's got a Zorak GX somewhere to maybe uh, trade into them. Yeah, you'd love stacking it up. You know, there it is. It's not even going to bother. Um, actually, going to use the puzzle of time beforehand. He's left the cards from the Mallow. He just got hit. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, and it, it just pulls them right up. He just, got, he just grabbed the card, grabbed his Zero back, a little discard, and just grab, throw it right back into the Ultra Ball. And what? He's just first impression with the Mew EX, take out the Buzz Wool. Yep, that's a, that's a big play. Um, Tapu Lele, not where you want to put the attachment for the turn. Uh, Natalie. Putting that Cynthia, hopefully she can get another Buzzwall um, set up, ready to go, and can really start mowing down those fighting weak attackers in the Zorark GXs. Um, some key cards that Natalie has on her side is that Fighting Fury Belt, and Ian is playing that Laurentis promo to boost plus 20, but those Fighting Fury Belts sitting at 230 is actually one is just 10 damage more than he can actually reach if he has all his promos on board uh, damage-wise. So that's a key card for her. If she can keep those on the board, I think she's in great shape. We've, we've seen this deck from Ian Robert and from other players, though. And they do run a really heavy line of Field Blower. So, yes, there's a number of things you want to be taking out, and you want to make sure that there's no no energy on the Garbodor, or no, no tool on the Garbodor, my apologies, to... Uh, to keep that lock in play, but at the same time, the Fighting Fury Belts need to go so you can get the knockouts. Natalie, unfortunately, hasn't really been able to get that track star start that we saw last round. Um, so she's really just trying to put herself in a position to be able to kind of get that one big turn, uh, have, again, variants kind of go her way, maybe a, a nice draw supporter, and really flood the board. Um, th this hurts right here. Yeah, that he, hurts. You need to be able to take out that Trubbish with the Flowstone on it right away, which is the first impression, you know. Gets, gets to keep the Mew in play, which pressures any buzz while she puts down, and she's not getting much setup now because of it. No, everything she, she brings up seems to be just getting knocked out by this Mew. I mean, she's already lost a few prizes. Uh, she's, I mean, she's taken one herself, but three prizes going over to Ian. He's definitely already a GX knockout ahead in the prize race. It's a deficit that Natalie needs to catch up with, and she just doesn't have one of those big attackers. You know, something to take out the Zoroark, something to take out the Goliath spot. There's just not one of those ready yet. 
uh, Natalie typically being able to take the full advantage of the end to lower hand sizes uh, because she does play that Garbotoxin Garbodor, turning off the trades and the Octillaries. Uh, but unfortunately, she's not really in a position to do that quite yet. Uh, Ultra Ball off the top. I don't necessarily think that Ultra Ball, um, she does have an S-Ball as well. So maybe we're going to see Garbotoxin and uh, a Buzz will come down so she can start. Correct. That's why she's in the finals, folks. Yep. Carbink, she's got a completely different strategy lined up. Yeah, we saw it in the top four, actually. So she uh, gets Carbink in front of that Mew and, and forces something else to come up and do the attacking. Exactly. This is very so interesting. Maybe a bit more vulnerable. Because she has two different tackles in his deck, minus Carbink, which is the Buzzle and Zygarde. So if she brings up the... He starts setting up a Buzzle. Ian has the Mew to knock out the Buzzle, but she goes to Silas and goes, hey, I, I need Zygarde. Ian also has a Glycopod to knock out a Zygarde. So it's a very awkward setup right now for what she wants to prioritize. So she does have the Ultra Ball in hand. Uh, we see Ian uh, trade here. But maybe what we're going to see is, hey, if you take a knockout on this Lele somehow, that's two fighting energy going to the discard, bring up Carbink, Ultra Ball for my Buzzwool, attach, Diamond Gif, yep. you know, with a break, and she's right back in it. She's got the beefiest attacker on the field. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's going to be one of those turns where she does just absolutely, like, Turn it around in a, in a single turn. You just drop a buzzwall, diamond gift it, then the next turn it's ready to go. I mean, we've not even seen any any Max Elixir play from her yet, so those are in there as well. Despite her struggling setup, she has managed to take three prizes. Unfortunately, in this current situation, she actually needs a critical mass of cards to really uh, kind of wrangle full control of the of this game, kind of as her deck does, gets ahead. Ooh. Yeah, a couple of good things in there. We just see the Garbotoxin Garbodor ready to go. Um, and the Max Elixir, so if something needs to be powered up, that's going to help. But she did lose access to that Ultra Ball. Another Float Stone off the top there, so... Uh she had a couple extra pieces right now. She could have ultra balled for like a like a buzz wall or like or actually just like maybe like a lele to a Cynthia and then garble toxin and N or something. There's a lot of things she could have done if she had just one more piece. But well, was his first and the elixir stuff. gone there uh, just to get that ultra ball in place. So diamond gift is probably going to be the preferred option to try and get energy back onto these buzz wall. Yep, uh, trying to uh, avoid uh, giving up that lele knockout. Uh, that's kind of looming right now and leverage that car bank. Uh, such a, a great tech that she played in this deck power up a buzzwool and really start uh, taking a, taking over Ian's board. Yeah, that's one of the advantages of uh, using these single prize attackers or, or set up Pokemon. Uh, you can kind of weave them in without them being knocked down for, for too much cost. Exactly. We always talk about that seven prize game, um, and Carbink does a great job uh, kind of pushing for that. Yep. Well, that's the uh, that's the big no oh, not even the knockout, just uh, trying to get rid of some energy there. He hit another oh. Guzma off of that trade just then, so we can see the Garbodor going down, or even just the Carbink. I I I'd kind of like him to see uh, take out that Carbink. I think it's really um, Natalie's way to to mm. ramp back. You know, going to one prize and extends the hand. Uh, yeah. Just yep. just a, a dead draw, unfortunately, there uh, for Natalie. Um, so the the Guzma didn't didn't quite matter, but. I'd like to see Natalie get a better a better start next time. She, you know, she right. attached to Lele, fighting Fury Bell, passed. That's, that's not what you want to see in the finals of the largest region. It's rather disgusting. To be honest, it's yeah. not what you want to get started as well. But we've seen Natalie's light speed play, and I think with her going first, if she gets that set up, she's going to be off to the races. We could mimic what she did in uh, the previous round of semifinals of how she was you know, setting up and getting everything she needed then. Um, definitely see a uh, better game between this matchup here. So I don't think it's like one side at all. I think there's outs on both ends, but both players need to utilize their decks sufficiently and get set up. Yep, exactly right. Uh, obviously the power of Bridget on Ian's side and uh, Natalie with all those draw supporters, all, a full set of Ultra Balls, two Nest Balls, really to get uh, her bench filled up with maybe a couple Trubbish, Buzzwool, uh, car bank and, and kind of be able to jockey position. She did a really good job uh, in the semifinals to be able to leverage the advantage that she gets. Garbotoxin, lock it in. What are you going to do now? Yeah, the big one as well is, is I think, dealing with that Mew. Because that Mew took so long to get through. It took two turns of energy drive. Mm -hmm. uh, it did take the knockout on Buzzwall while it was messing around. And you, you can't afford that. Yep. Um, it's such a small Pokemon that does so much work. Fortunately for Natalie, because she's playing Garbodor, she can't turn out that Mew ability, which is something I learned so savagely on stream uh, when I misspoke uh, in the semifinals. But Garbotoxin does great work turning yeah. off Mew's ability to copy you know, that right of speeding and, and taking those easy knockouts. Either knock it out or make it useless, because I don't think I've ever seen anyone use Replace on their Mew EX. The thing with that also too is you know, Garbotoxin is an effect. Mew is the only out that um, Ian has to these buzzwolves as far as a weakness attacker. So. Big, big, big key point there also. It, it's, it kind of seems like we're going to see some big swingy matchups. On Ian's side, some key field blowers. On uh, Natalie's side, keeping those Fighting Fury belts and being able to keep that Mew off the board. Yeah, we've talked about it a few times, though. When you play such a heavy line of field blower in this Zoroark deck, you can still set the Zoroarks up. You only need to trade once, maybe twice. So 
the benefit you really have is to say, hey, uh, one turn, field blower, garbage toxin gone, trade, 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 oh, my hand's full. Yep, there you go. Uh, we see we're going to retreat here. I think she goes max elixir in hand and maybe wants to start pirate, uh, powering up that Zygarde. Um, and, and really, again, Natalie's deck is asking all the questions, not providing any answers. You know, Ian's clearly reactive, acerolas, things of that nature, mm -hmm. puzzles, all that type of stuff that kind of control the board state. And Natalie just goes in, asks the questions, and say, if you can't answer these, you are losing this game. Yeah, li uh, Lily coming out there, so full benefit from Lily. Uh, would have been nice to see the buzzwall a little bit early, maybe before the max elixir. But you've already got the Zygarde ready to sell Storm. It's actually well. a great start from her because she, you know, like we were saying before, she does not play any Bridget, but going back to those awesome draw supports she plays, has a full bench setup, one of each of her main, you know, priorities in his deck, and the parallel city to slow down Ian. So, um, but I will start. We're going to see maybe something similar to where, you know, this deck that's meant to destroy Zora could come to affect this game. I'll tell you what, all the all the spirit energy that uh, was sucked out of Alex Hill and those Max Elixirs have gone straight to Natalie. Yep. She is two lighting two. it up with those cards. Yeah, fantastic start for there. Buzzwall's ready to jet punch. Uh, Zygarde's ready to sell Storm and, and Carbink. Ready to uh, maybe get out of the way and <laughs> let them do some damage. Look, worst case scenario, Carbink takes it on the chin and she's still got two powered up attackers. Best case scenario, she actually just gets to bring up an attacker and still use it uh, and leverage it in that mid to late game, as we've talked about. It's so big, powering up her huge attackers. Yep, well, no, no explosive start from Ian, uh, just quickly. No Bridget on the opening turn, actually. This time a Cynthia. Yeah, well, he's hoping to see a couple extra Pokemon here, and definitely he already has the energy for turn. Uh, but yeah, like you said before, no turn, one Bridget, just to Cynthia out, and I can't tell, but he didn't react, react right away, so he might not have much in his hand. Yeah, it looked like he pulled the Mew out, though, but, you know, the Mew's not so hot now. You want that Buzzwall in the way to take it on the chin from the Mew, so probably something for a little bit later. Exactly right, and he's kind of in a precarious position. Uh, th you know, you'd like to use that Wimpod, Wimpod ability, uh, but look what's on the bench. It's a Zorua, and that's just uh, that's an easy KO for Natalie. So it, he's he's really got a jockey and trying to figure out what he's doing. Two choice bands gone there, um, which helps him hit those 190, 220 yep. numbers um, that we've been talking about. That's why he runs that Lorantis promo. Seeing those go down early, uh, not necessarily a good sign for Ian. So he's clearly trying to uh, not fall foul of what happened to Natalie, though, which is get through the first couple of turns with the tiny bench. Uh, so, yeah, giving up any resources he can just to play the Ultra Ball successfully. Still going to be significant him throwing those choice bits around because Natalie, remember, she plays a counter in Fighting Fury Belt. So, a real high numbers to hit for her, even with the uh, Lorenzo's promo. Without those choice bands, it's going to be really tough to get there. Yeah, we see, uh, although Ian uh, running a heavy count of Field Blower, three of them uh, not necessarily finding it uh, to kind of loosen up that board. Uh, parallel City putting the squeeze, putting the pressure on as it does. Well, the top of there, they're getting another draw supporter, so it looks like Ian is uh, getting kind of desperate, I'd say, to, to make sure he gets all the things he needs. Um, you know, making sure he's set up for the next turn. Um, do you oh. see a, a big goose? Uh, that here? is huge right now. The only Zuru on board, it's going to be the jet punch, set up the knockout on the energy wind pod, and, you know, Glyspot can only do so much right now without the draw support of Zorak. Yeah, th this is how Natalie wants to play these games. She really wants to. Uh, I had early pressure. Yep. And just, just stay aggressive throughout the whole game. Once she starts going, there's really uh, no stopping her. The, the Pringles technique, I believe, if that catchphrase still holds true. Um, but, you know, now that the Tapu Lele's in the way, it's, uh, you know, it's going to take some hits, but there's only a limited amount of time it can take hits for before Ian's bench have to start answering and taking damage from potential jet punches as well. You know, there's not even any real attack uh, that um, you can do right now without, you know, another glass pot out and grass energy, but... Yeah, he needs a lot of combos right now. Flowstone, Grass, Glass Pod, just to get this knockout on the Buzzwool. Yep, I, mean, I can see uh, Puzzle of Time. Just a single Puzzle of Time. Just played. to see another Puzzle of Time, too. That's like one of the most gut wrenching feelings is oh. do I just wait a turn and maybe get the second puzzle? And then when you sometimes get punished like that, it really hurts. It almost never fails. Um, a, a rough pass for Ian there. Uh, and, and I'd like to say that. Uh, Natalie has the, the full fighting gentleman uh, headlock in right now, and she is putting the pressure on. There's no looking back for her. Like I've mentioned before, uh, in her semifinals match, when she gets to this point, she throws it in cruise control yep. and, and and just coasts to the finish, taking easy, easy knockouts. Yeah, this, this one looks like a figure four leg lock, and she's kind of just waiting for Ian oh, to tap man. out. Yep. It just got a whole lot worse with this... Uh, this big play, the strong wow. energy's there. Gonna make this an easy knockout with this fully charged up Zygarde. And this is just so scary to see. Parallel City, two setup attackers, Carping Break just sitting there waiting. You know, even if you dock one out, I'm gonna reload. 
And <laughs> all, all Natalie needs is just a garbage order to really just take over this game completely. Yeah, we like to call this, uh, it's pretty much Fisher Price of this place, Child's Play. Uh, Natalie's got everything going her way. She really, really uh, just kind of wants to get, to get this game over and see this exact same start in Game 3. Yep. Oh, she's going for it with uh, Ultra Ball, <laughs> discarding Ultra Ball and Ultra Ball. So, uh, pretty much one more search. It is going to be Garbodor, though. So, I've uh, got a feeling it's about to get a little <laughs> this bit is, worse. This is the nail in the coffin right here for this game, too. <laughs> yep. Well, she hasn't got the, the tool just yet. She will be going back in with a Cynthia uh, to try and grab it. So, I think if it comes down, that's, that's going to be uh, salt in the wound there. She draws off it. Uh, that's not a tool. That's not a tool. Oh, oh there it is. There's the flight tools and the fury belt as and well. And the elixir. Uh, so actually, if she gets uh, knuckle impact, is what 160. Mm -hmm. So it she is. has fighting fury belt. If she max elixirs into an energy, she can actually just retreat and take the KO right here. <laughs> um, unfortunately, misses that max elixir. But I was uh, I was pretty excited about just screaming bang knockout and let's go to game three, uh, keeping us on our toes here in yeah. Collinsville. I mean, the big thing is is you know, we are going be looking to see what she does to uh, put Garbotoxin in play. Um, she has the options with the tools, and there's the Flight Stone, so even if Ian manages to find the Zoroark, um, yeah, you're not going to be able to use Trade. Uh, that's a bit of a problem, uh, as we do see the promotion of the... Is there a Flight Stone damage. on the Zygarde? Is that how it's for your tree? Okay. Yep. That was a Fighting yeah. Fear Belt for a second, and was definitely confused by that for a quick second. No, the, the Fighting Fear Belt going over to the Buzzwall, though, so with the... Uh, with its damage output increased, it just becomes a little bit scarier. Uh, there's not much I can, I can see on Ian's side that he could do right now. He needs... Ooh. Well, there's the parallel play, so there's definitely a good start right there. Plus a Sycamore. Or sorry, that was a trade. And if we can get another Zerua down and end play here, uh, we can maybe we'll see a, a little bit of a resurgence from Ian on his side. Yeah, we've got to see what he manages to do with these cards. He just pulled off the trade as well. Does decide to ace roller up that Tapu Lele. Um, definitely something he needs to do, otherwise an easy two prizes going over there. Um, but at the same time, still no real answers to Buzzwall. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Acer roll on that Tabu Lele was the throws of a desperate man. Um, it's... <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, that one's... I might draw this card and pick him up. Yeah, it's, uh, that's time, I think, for, for Ian in this one. Um, Bell's been wrong. It's, it's last calls before we go to game three. Well, he can get a knockout now, uh, you know... Yeah, you know, if he gets the flow stone and gets the Goliath he get a knockout here plus an end at one. I mean, it could spell comeback, uh, um, but there's a buzz wall on bench waiting to you know hit a big target. Yeah, and we've got that wind pot. I believe that has 60 damage on it. She prioritized hitting it again, so I, I believe it is sitting at 60. So yeah. uh, with one prize left, uh, uh, that, fair that, enough. That jet punch, that wind pot can't hide. It needs to evolve, or else that's just uh, that's a free roll for for Natalie. Yeah, I mean he, he's done a good job of, of keeping the. Uh, Keeping the float stones off, but it's it's not going to be enough, I don't think. You know, we do see more field blower play, so tearing through those, um, but it's looking pretty done. End of one. Natalie still needs the energy for the knockout, the return knockout, and knuckle punch. If we see everything come to fruition with you know, float stone, collide spot, and knock out a Zygarde, and if there's going to be a return knockout, knockout with Buzzle or not, but he is living on a prayer right now, uh, looking for you know some cards right now after, after Natalie's end of one. <laughs> she got an energy off that. Yeah, I mean, Buzzwell's going to come up and be able to do whatever it wants, really. Yep. Yeah, he uh, didn't get what he needed, and we're going to be going to game number three. Pack it up, pack it in. Uh, I'd like to see, we kind of had anemic starts uh, game one with Natalie, game two with Ian. I'd like to see us, see Ian get that Bridget, get Natalie, uh, get her a couple of down, get that uh, Buzzwell to start pressuring early, and really uh, start throwing some haymakers back and forth to give ourselves an exciting game three here in Collinsville. So you'd like to see a real match, not uh, one of those ones where one person just pushes the other one round. <laughs> exactly. We've kind of seen a, a little bit of oppressive play on each side. Uh, you know, both kind of stumbled out of the blocks. Uh, it was a bit prohibitive for them to get started. And as you can see, uh, in the finals, you played every single out. You give yourself mm -hmm. the best opportunity you can. Uh, but sometimes it just turns out to be a bit futile. So game three, uh, I'd, I'd expect uh, a banger. Yeah, I mean, if they both get a good start, we, we could end up with another one of these uh, shockers where one person has an absolute western trying to get off the ground and uh, they got rolled over in about 10 minutes. Good knock on wood a little bit. We, we definitely do not want to see these happen after they've played, you know, 15 rounds of Swiss, uh, quarterfinals, semifinals, now in the finals. Yep. You know, after 18 rounds of Pokemon, you don't want to get donked out of this tournament. That's got a, that, that's a gut wrench. And, and don't forget, you know, we've had a game before where Ian came from behind, even in, like, really tough situations against, you know, games saw previously him on stream, and, you know, this kind of situation can happen again. You know, don't count out either player when it comes to these low hands and 
gets fall behind. We're notorious for calling it, you know, yep. I don't see any plays out, and they somehow figure out a way back. So You know, the the, the, the craziest craziest thing that could have happened, the Necrozzo GX Black Ray. Yep. <laughs> double knockout, four prizes, trade into double puzzle, puzzle. counter. Yep. It was uh, mind-blowing. Yeah, it was nuts. And and the one thing I want to see, uh, I've been promised Lorantis. I'm still not seeing Lorantis. I'm still struggling to see a big Lorantis play in any of the times we've seen this deck on stream. Uh, We've had, we had one moment, but you know, hopefully we get a chance here in game number three that is underway. Uh, maybe we can see it, you know, come alive here. And a puzzle right to start. So this means he's either going to sick him more, or he doesn't have a much at all for a start. That's not ideal. Um, I don't think opening with a puzzle to get your hand nice and safe for the next turn is particularly indicative of a fantastic start. Um, could be wrong, but gets a couple of basics down and passes over to Natalie, who is going to start her search. Uh, Nest Ball is obviously uh, exactly what she wants to do to start getting set up. And uh, if I'm Natalie and I'm starting that Tapu Lele, it's, uh, my heart is probably fluttering. Uh, but seeing Ian go, puzzle, look at the top three, pass. Okay, breathe a sigh of relief. I still got a chance. Yep. Let's go. Let, let's get off to the races here. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's looking pretty good. I mean, she didn't have uh, one of the finest, like a Sycamore would have been lovely. But to sit here and get six new ones, yeah, I'd take that. Uh, it's what's beautiful about Cynthia is in these early games when your uh, opponent doesn't have maybe the most stellar hand, being able to just refresh your hand and leave theirs as is untouched uh, is, is is crucial, especially in the finals of uh, of the Collinsville Regionals right here, where we know Ian's might have a bit of a lackluster hand. She's gonna be in uh, no shortage of supporters, by the way. I've seen two Sycamore and a Tapu Lele in there, so unless he manages to pull out an N or something, then uh, it's gonna be interesting. Is he going to gnaw for 60 damage? I, I can't say I've said that at all today or yesterday, <laughs> um, but this is definitely a first here. Yes, that man just gnawed for 60 on his Wimpod. I, I don't know what else to tell you. All uh, stops pulled here in the finals. Uh, nothing to be to be left up for question. Every bit of damage is going to count for Ian right now. And, you know, bringing the buzzwall down, especially with the Fighting Fury belt on, making it a little more manageable to, to hit with the knockout uh, is good, but... Natalie's just going for it, playing out with those supporters that she used to to try and get more cards and just stop punishing this slow style. She's, she has options right now to even kind of get a little aggressive and, you know, she has an elixir, she has energy, she could ultra ball some of her stuff away, but at the same time, Ian's not doing much right now, so she can kind of just relax, hold back, hey, I'm going to do this jet punch and uh, apply pressure elsewhere. Yep, jet punch still a little bit short there on the Wimpod, but the combination of Fighting Fury Belt and the strong energy, really, really smart. Ace roller early on for Ian on the win pod. I would just go ahead and promote the Zoru and maybe I don't know you ram in this situation, but uh, uh he's gonna he's gonna get knocked off from a jet punch on bench anyway, so might as well make him work for it, I guess. <laughs> well the start's not been ideal from Rob. He's still playing around with the same three basics. Oh uh, man. you see Natalie yes. hovering with that Garbador ready to to pop the nail down. Before she does that though, gonna ultra ball away. Uh, an elixir and an energy, so not too worried about her. Draws her hand must be fantastic. She, she she smells blood in the water, putting pressure on. Stick with the game plan. Don't overextend. Don't dump re unnecessary mm -hmm. resources. As I've said time and time again, she's asking all the questions. She's yep. sensing in her headlock, and it's Ian's responsibility to get out of this. Uh, an anemic uh, acerola on a wimp pod is not going to get it there. Garbotoxin is online, and yeah, we we've seen it before. More of these basics disappearing. Ian needs something good off the top right now. Could be a bit of a problem. Uh, he is, we are about to not he's again. He's got to go with it. It's the big play. It's, uh, it's maybe it's the secret to this deck. But uh, no, you mentioned you know, Natalie smelling blood in the water. It definitely looks like the real deal. Not a Michael Phelps digital shark. She's <laughs> really going for him in this game. And, you know, even Ian's questioning these tiny fight back plays that he's trying to make. Yeah. Just another pass. Uh, you oh. hate to see that on Ian's side after such a, a wonderful tournament and uh, kind of just floundering, not really accomplishing much. She can find a strong energy. That's it. It's done. Oh, there's the jet punch. So, uh, <laughs> so active. Uh, active. One of the, and one does of he the... have any kind of response? Ace of roll up and okay, so he at least has some. Gets to live a little bit longer here. Yeah. He, uh, uh, he gets to start again. But if those are the supporters you're drawing, then not what you need right now. Exactly right, and that's kind of the the slight negative of running the high Bridget count and things of that nature. You know, theoretically, in the in the back end of the game, when you draw that Bridget, that's trade fodder. Garbotoxin prevents you from that, so now you're just kind of cluttered up with dead cards, and uh, that Bridget off the top uh, may keep him alive a little bit longer, but it's not really advancing his board state. He does get to thin his deck by three. Um, that helps a little bit, I guess, and I guess rearrange them as well. Um, 
Tapu Lele now in the act of trying to get some work done, but... We've seen this play from him before where he uh, benched a Bridget and put a Lele down, which usually is a weird thing to do. You usually want to save your Leles for, for supporters in your late game or, you know, everything in that aspect. But he's also a great attacker. Energy drive hitting for 80 damage here and, you know, kind of putting some pressure back on an alley side. Yeah, you gotta wonder though, if you're on uh, Natalie's side, you can just start picking stuff up on the bench pretty comfortably right now. We do see her attaching another energy here, so. I believe that's the third one. It's not even safe for Tapu Lele. Yeah, that double colorless is gone. Which, uh, keep in mind, it lets her use her knuckle impact for uh, attack again instead of having to hold that back. Well, Buzzwall's right. finally gone! Yep, Buzzwall is gone. Ian cobbling something together. Uh, Lele's double colorless choice ban, and uh, we see. <laughs> After a sacrificial Tapu Lele, uh, the second one comes up to, to clean up the clean up the the buzz wall there. Um, oh, and just oh, a and pass. just a pass. So that's very interesting. This is uh, that that door that I thought was slammed shut just creaked back open, yeah, and, the, and uh, Ian needs to capitalize here. The, the no energy in hand door uh, that's that's been opened. I think there for Ian uh, is going to be able to finally get a Glycopod out. So some damage is there now, uh, but a first impression and the absolute limit of it at the moment. And that's what he's, what he's going to do. He's going to knock it with his first impression, and now full pressure's on Natalie to respond with energy right now. Just a Garbodor and a Buzzwool, so no immediate draw for her in the form of Lele. She has to draw strictly out of her deck. Now, we did see earlier when she Ultra Balled to get the Carbank down, she did throw away a Max Elixir when that Buzzwool was on the bench, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe that's coming back to bite her a little bit, because we'd at least like to be jet punching now yep. to get some damage <laughs> on the board. Anything helps, but you see her uh, with the Ultra Ball, you know, going for the the carving. So when you look at her Tapu Lele count, you know, did she have an extra one in there? Was she able to get a supporter? If not, then this is probably one of the better plays to try and set up another carving. Exactly right. She's got to do something. She's got to power up a Buzzwall. That's uh, her route to victory. Um, just rotating through her Pokemon. Uh, my feeling is maybe to get that breakdown, maybe an energy, and load up Ooh. the Buzzwall very quickly. It's a yeah, tough thing right now because she wasn't able to get a supporter there with Garbo Taxon op active. So she's kind of in a spot right now to where I just got to find energy supporter and, and hopefully reset here. Yep. Well, that's what those energies we were talking about. It's going to be a strong energy onto Buzzwall. Uh, going to start dealing that damage again with these big, big jet punches. Yeah, we saw an armor press from Ian uh, last turn. So the damage kicked, notched down just a little bit. Um, I believe we're still hitting for 40 there, if my math is okay. Field blower is big. Field see, blower is very big. I don't know if I, I guess you want to play the field blower in that situation, but the Garbodor was actually kind of hurting Natalie there in a sense too, because she could ultra buff Lele or anything like that. So I'm, I'm hoping this play works out for him. The the field blower can what it also permits him is allowed to trade a little bit, maybe get to the Guzma, maybe just get that Garbotoxin off the board completely, very good point. or aggressively go after that car bank. But we're just going to see uh, an armor press into Buzzwool here. Yep, no other place for her there, just trying to get damage off it for Ian, trying to get damage down on Natalie's side. Um, but that's really slow and steady, I think. The, the field blow being gone, though, means two armor presses will get it. Yep, exactly right. And at this point, Ian, is, is this is a, a very resource uh, conservative line to take, uh, just kind of maximizing the mileage he can get out of that Glissopod. We see a um, Guzma pull up a Zorark GX with no energy attached, and Natalie's doing the same thing. She's trying to maximize her damage output. She has no cards in her hand now, so she's kind of on a prayer right now. Ace is incredibly unfortunate right there and uh, for Natalie. How many prizes does Ian have left? Is that two or three, three. prizes left? He's, so he's managed to stage a good fight back there. He you know, picked up the carping, and he picked up the buzzwall earlier in the game. A quick, okay, a quick judge thing. ruling there from our, our good friend, Judge Corey. Uh, an extra card was, was accidentally pulled, and, and it just had to be revealed and shuffled back in. Absolutely right. Nothing malicious there. Uh, just kind of you know, sweaty palms, wh wh whatever it might be. It's the finals. People are nervous. Accidentally plucked another one. No big deal. Rectify. We're back into the action. Yep. Judges have always been fantastic all weekend, helping us out at these tournaments as per usual. So smart play there. Uh, correctly called by the judge for, for clarity. Uh, the big thing there it is. Oh, man, we saw Ian fight Strong back. Strong comeback yep. um, right there. Ian gets it there. Really quick play there um, from both these players. As Ian is going to be your 2018 St. Louis Regional Champion. Uh, congratulations to him, uh, especially in that third game. Fell far behind right at the beginning. Um, literally 